Here's what I found to be the top three conditions for success that I found, okay? The first one is clarity. Think about it, yourself. Whenever something isn't clear, you never take as much action on it as you could, okay? If something isn't clear for your people, they're not taking as much action on it. There's an interesting guy uh, in America, Andy Stanley. He has lots of people, he's a preacher, and he mentioned uh, uh, a favorite say, uh, phrase he heard from another preacher early on. He said, preacher said this, if it's a mist in the pulpit, it's not clear in my mind, it's a fog in the pew. <laughs> it's not going to be clear out there. Think about it. As a leader, you only get clear by two, th two ways. Either you have to talk about it or you have to write it down. So if you're not clear as a leader and you start talking to your people, the first first person and the third person got a different version. <laughs> now you have to adapt the message, but you have to get clear. So clarity has to be on you know, roles and responsibilities, clarity of the vision, clarity of the outcomes, when, clarity of the behaviors of the culture. When things are clear, people always take more action. Okay? The second one relates to people. Okay? But particularly Business judgment, okay? You need great people. In fact, you know, uh, uh, Tony Shea, the, the leader of Zappo, said people, he said, made interesting comments, he said people are not your most important asset. He said your people pipeline is the most important asset. Because you can have great people, but if you have nobody in the pipeline to replace them, your performance drops. And now you have to drop and do more things in the business because of the people. But I found it's not just having great people, but trusting their business judgment. Think about this. If you have a, a, a good person, but you don't trust their business judgment in a key role, but you're but, you know, very good what they do and everything, but you don't trust their business judgment, will you delegate the decision for them, to them to do? No, you don't trust it. So I found that the most key thing is I need business judgment in my best people, and I needed to grow business judgment in the people that are going to replace them. Because I need the business judgment there if I'm going to let go of the decision. I mean, it could do a lot of work, but if, if I can't let go of the decision, I have to ride alongside them to know everything that's happening in order to decide for them. So that's huge. And the third one, we mentioned at the beginning, is people need influencing skills. If your people can't influence someone else in the team, where do they come for the influence they need to get the job done? They come to you. So you always have to get engaged if they can't can work together and influence each other. If they can't influence the vendor or they can't influence the customer, you have to ride alongside them. So I found the two things I needed to grow in my team for them to take more ownership is I needed to grow business judgment and I needed to grow influencing skills if I was going to let go, really let go. Okay? And I needed to create an environment of clarity. Okay? The more things are unclear, the more people hesitate, the more people are always giving excuses. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know, and, and so forth. But when things are clear, they take more action. Okay? So keep in mind those clarity, business judgment, and the people in your teams with good influencing skills, particularly peer influencing skills. That means they can work together well, they find a way to get the win-win, and they can influence the vendor and the customer.